And welcome to Power On Podcast. It has been a very long time, and I know that some of you probably never listened to those other episodes because those were a long, long, long time ago on a different website and all that kind of jazz. But this is Power On Podcast, and I am your host, Mudogato553, also known as Taylor. It's easy to call me Taylor. Call me Taylor. And also hosting with me is Sushi. Please introduce yourself. Hello, everyone out there. Uh, yeah, my name is Sushi. Sometimes I go by the handle Sushi B as well. You can call me Sush if you want to call me that. Yeah, really happy to be on this podcast. Uh, <laughs> you know, this is a bit of a restart, refreshing, rebooting of the oh, Power On podcast. And I, I just feel actually pretty privileged to be able to work with Taylor on this. Pretty exciting. Well, to be honest, definitely I, I'm happy that you prodded me along to <laughs> get back into the groove of doing this sort of thing because as 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 you could probably tell, I'm a bit lethargic when I get, when trying to do things sometimes. So <laughs> yeah, that I mean that happens in life, right? You you start getting busy and stuff and these kind of things do get put on the side and reasonably so. But it's also fun to have some projects where you just have something to do instead of just sitting around all the time. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I think what also helps is that there's somebody uh, doing it with me and not just me because I was trying to solo it at first and, I don't know, I'm... Uh, I can see that being <laughs> Even though I wasn't doing that much, it, it it felt like I was doing everything, so... Yeah, no, it can be tough. It, it, and it's also, usually when you have more people around you, you can make better discussion, you know, have have better better show in general, right? If you just have one person doing something, it, it can be really tough sometimes. Right, well, and, and there's definitely nothing against Greg and Shintai, because I have both kind of episodes that I had done with them a long time ago. And, yeah, there's nothing against them. It's just, uh, like, I need a host. I need a co-host. Otherwise, I I just can't do it. So. <laughs> future guests, future guests, future guests. Future guests. Uh, I guess um, a little bit, uh, just uh, just real quick. Power on podcast. Talk about uh, different things, uh, gaming related. I guess would be a good word for it, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I would say so. Mo- mostly gaming related, but I think we might have a few tangent episodes here and there as well, talking about you know some of the things that we've experienced. Since we don't live in North America or places that some people are more familiar with, for sure, for sure, <laughs> the, yeah, yeah, because that's uh, I guess an interesting thing that about both of us is that we're, for lack of a better word, honestly, I don't like this word. I guess we could be called expatriates or whatever, whatever the hell. Uh, we're nomads. 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 So much cooler. No, no, that's a good. Yeah, I don't know about cooler, but <laughs> <laughs> well, cooler than expatriate. It, it does. That sounds. That sounds really bad. <laughs> like because that's yeah. Aside from that, the uh, so yeah, talk about that and would. As we kind of get into the groove of things, uh, we'd love to definitely have other guests on to join us. So definitely keep that in mind. <laughs> so I guess, do you just want to go into it, or is there something else you want to add to? Uh, no, I think we should just go right into it, just dive right in. All right, let's roll. With that being said, uh, I guess, Sushi, could you sing not too horribly many people know who you are, or... Where you come from, that sort of thing. Could you kind of go, since this is a gaming podcast, go and go, go away, go. All right, I'm out of here. Go, 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 go. Uh, end this now. End it quick. <laughs> done, we're done. Not even five minutes. But oh, <laughs> show this wow. podcast ever. That was unexpected. <laughs> so um, could you just, I guess, talk about... A bit about, I guess, your gaming history, for lack of a better word for it, or like what kind of got you into games and all that sort of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'd like to, I, and I don't want to make it too long-winded because I think uh, it's it's not that exciting as, as you know you would probably expect. Yeah, I've already put <laughs> you to sleep. Uh, this is over. This interview is over. <laughs> I, I guess on a on a serious note, though. Uh, actually, uh, you know, when I, when I was a young kid, um, I, I didn't have a lot of, of money and stuff, so 
I, I, I was a bit of a, I guess, a late bloomer into gaming, I, I guess, if you want to say that. Teenage years. No, I, I, was, I was still a kid. I was still a kid. I mean, I started with the NES, but I got it quite late in the NES as life. Uh, you know, a lot of other kids had already had them for a few years and, you know, knew the games really well and things like that. And, and I was only starting to play Mario, you know, whenever other kids were almost getting ready to move into, I guess, the SNES era even. So, you know, I was, it was a bit far behind where, where all the other kids were, were already moving into the, the newer, cooler stuff already. <laughs> so it was, it was kind of a bit of a sad time, but, but I, I mean, I enjoyed the experiences I still had, and I, I luckily had friends that had those newer machines and stuff, and I was able to play a lot of that stuff too. But generally speaking, growing up, I, I did not have a lot of the new consoles or games. It wasn't until uh, university where I was able to get some money together and finally kind of go back and buy all the stuff that I really enjoyed and, and really wanted to collect. Now, when you got into uni, did you focus more, like, when you did play games, did you just focus on all the games and stuff that you missed, or was it kind of a mixed bag of that plus some of the new stuff that was out at the time? Well, it was it was a bit of a mixed bag, I guess, because generally, you know, I, I'd hung on to the stuff that I, I did fortunately get. You know, I started with the NES, and somehow I, I pieced together what I call the Frankenstein Genesis. <laughs> And basically the Frankenstein Genesis is uh, my mom found the console, just the console, in the trash can. And so she brought this, this console home and it had a, a Sonic 2 in it. And I'm looking at this machine and thinking, well, I can't use this. It's got nothing with it. And it took me months and I scoured pawn shops and stores and, and I pieced this thing together. I, I got, uh, you know, the, the, the power supply for it. I, I got the antenna connector for it. I, I eventually got controllers. I, I've tracked down some games. I, I mean, this thing was was literally a Frankenstein. It it had pieces from everywhere. <laughs> and but but I mean, I love that. I still I still own it today. I don't have it with me at this exact moment, but I still own it today. And I think part of me really really loves Sega because of being able to put together this this bizarre Frankenstein Genesis. But with that said, it's, it's I, your I, baby. It's your it baby. Is, it's kind of my. It's <laughs> it was somebody else's babies. <laughs> I just took their parts. <laughs> um, but no, at the, at the time in uni, uh, yeah, I kind of jumped. Uh, that was uh, around the PlayStation and the Dreamcast era. I, I bought that and I kind of got back and I and I went back and got an SNES and was collecting that kind of stuff too. So it was it was a mixed bag. Okay, that's uh, like what uh, kind of games really drew your attention what were the, I, I, the i'm a bit of a oddball i guess um I, I have an interest in just about every kind of game i think and no disrespect to pc gaming but and i did some as a kid pc gaming but i generally enjoyed the consoles more and uh i and i play just about anything i i mean from something such as kirby's avalanche like a puzzle game to you know, Fantasy Star 4 on the Genesis, it, it really didn't matter. It just, something about games, I think because it, it was a bit unattainable to me, I somehow gathered an interest in just about any kind of game. It could be sports, it could be a simulator, it could have been anything, and, and I probably would have just tried it and played it. And I might not have liked it, but I would have tried it still. No, well, like simulator, you're talking like racing uh, simulator I, I guess if if there was a pc game i had i did have flight simulator one of the, the early flight simulator games <laughs> so um like that or you know just i i can't even think of them off the top of my head but there's a lot of different games that that i could play I, like dune 2 i don't know if you remember dune 2 the strategy game no nope. uh, pc it was it was before warcraft basically uh, honestly, I, uh, and I know this is probably going to make some people very sad in the pants. I never really got into PC gaming. My, I honestly, <laughs> I didn't have a computer until I was in high school. Yeah, well, and, and I think that was the case, you know, because PCs were, they, they didn't really get popular until the internet really kind of solidified that. I mean, people had them and people used them, but they were still kind of expensive, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, I, it, I, I you're, you're talking like shot. early two thousand. For, for PC games? For, for myself, for myself. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. So I, did, I, I didn't have a computer until like the early 2000s. Yeah, I, mean, so. I never had my own personal computer with my own money until 2003 or something. I mean, I just couldn't afford it. I didn't have one for years. Mm -hmm. the, so. uh, yeah, so, but like there were a couple PC games I remember playing, like uh, Commander King. 
Remember that one? Oh yeah, yeah. Awesome. yeah Commander Keen. Um, oh, what, what is it? The the old two D Duke Nukem game. Yeah, the original Duke Nukem game. Love yeah, I played game. those. Jazz the Jackrabbit. Did you uh, come no. across that one? I remember the platform just, shooter. I remember game. Sextress. That was pretty awesome. Not going to lie, that was a sneaky game that I had. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that was yeah. Uh, <coughs> moving on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> let me fix my tie here. It's uh, yeah. gotten loose. Right, right, right. It's a little hot in here. So, oh, let's see. So you went into okay. So you just uh, more of a how how would you describe it? More as a for lack of a better term for it, like a jack of all trades kind of kind of gamer. You just kind of dabble in. An interesting way of putting it, yeah, but I, I guess to, to be, I guess, completely true, I, I mean, I do really, really love RPGs, especially, but, you know, when, if, if I see a game and I have an interest in it, I'm usually not too afraid to try it out, I, and I tend to stick away from something that a lot of people suggest to me, especially if it seems, if it seems popular, I, I might stick away from it, I, I don't really have a reason for it, but I want to try something that few people have tried, I guess. It sounds like your emo. Uh, I wouldn't go that far. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> emo. It's popular, so it makes me sad. It makes me, that, it makes me disgusted. <laughs> Twisted inside. Uh, no, I, I wouldn't go quite that far. I mean, I, I've played some stuff like Gears of War, and I really enjoy it. But just, um, I, I try to find something that's got some unique aspect to it, or, or just that... The mystery of the unknown. Yeah, kind of thing. There, and, and it's hard to come by that in gaming now with, with the internet and stuff, and so much... Uh, you know, information and news constantly coming out with new things. Uh, it's hard to find something that is really unique that people don't have much concept of. So that's a good point because there's uh, there's so much information out there nowadays that really can't have that. I don't know there's this kind of idea that I have. The lesser a game is known, that a lot of people seem to really enjoy those games. Yeah, I think that's probably really true. I mean, just as much as, I guess, the popular games as well, though, right? Right, right, yeah, yeah. So, like, it's... With popular games, it seems to have... Because they're popular, you ha have this immediate dichotomy where it's just like, oh, I hate this game cause, because there's so many people talking about it all the time and it just kind yeah. of wags on people. Whereas it, with a game that's not well-known or not played much or just just doesn't see the light of day, people, like, you get those five people that have played it, and they're like, oh, it's such a fantastic game. Yeah, maybe, maybe it becomes a little more personal for them, I guess, where it, it's so much harder to find someone to discuss that game with, and maybe you really become personally attached to it for some reason, and when you do finally find that person you can talk to about it, it just kind of, the floodgate opens, because who can you talk to about it? Nobody, nobody knows this game you're talking about half the time. So maybe maybe that's that. it. I would that's actually a really good way of putting it. I I didn't really think about that, but that's I would definitely agree with that because uh, an example for me would be the uh, Mega Man sixty four. Because when I first played that game, when that game first came out, and all of my friends they hated that game. I didn't know anybody <laughs> that liked that game. Like yeah. everybody seemed to just rag on it and just say this is a terrible game. I don't like this game. Give me right. Mega Man X three D or something like that. <laughs> but right, right. and it's just. Stunning nowadays that you, you can find so many people that enjoy the game so much. It's just kind of like, well, <laughs> where were these people when I needed them so many years ago? <laughs> kind of thing. So and again, I guess the internet helps with that a bit. It, it's a little easier to find somebody who can maybe like that game that isn't that popular. With you know, there's going to be somebody who does enjoy some game that you enjoy as well. There's always going to be someone. You're not going to be the only one. Nonsense. <laughs> there can only be one. Unless, unless you're the only one who made the game and you've never <laughs> distributed it to anybody. <laughs> Maybe then. But, I mean, <laughs> if it's mass distributed, somebody else has played it and probably liked it in some regard. Yeah, so, you got to hope. <laughs> you really got to hope. hope. You know, I guess if it's some sort of weird tentacle rape game, maybe it might be harder to find people who enjoy it. But I don't know, there's a place maybe, it's, maybe it's really easy to get into one of those those groups that are just yeah yeah. Don't, do you remember that moment when that tentacle grabbed her from behind? Or like, oh god, that. Oh. <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. But uh, I guess just to wrap up quick, yeah, I guess my my game experience has been kind of all over. Uh, I guess we didn't really get into the fact that. You know, maybe you and I, we, we did live in North America before, but now we don't. And I think, uh, obviously, some people who have tuned into your channel, they know more or less about 
I guess, some of your personal uh, backstory. But for me, I, I'm actually not living in Japan like you, but I'm living very close to you, and I'm living in Korea. Da, 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 da. I, was when you, I was wondering when you were going to say it. <laughs> so, but yes, you live in K-Land. Yeah, so, I mean, we live, it, it's funny how we do live quite close to each other in a way, but the cultures have some similarities and also big differences, as you would expect. Oh, for sure. Like by flight, it's about what an hour and a half, maybe. Yeah, depending where you're flying, I would say an hour and a half on average, I guess. So, and the further south you get towards uh, in Japan towards Korea, it seems like there's a lot of similarities. But since I don't really live that close to to the southern part of Japan, it's it's, it's a little bit more, I guess, Japanese esque. <laughs> I, I don't want to say Japanese. -y, that I hate that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. And even when you think about you know, even adding China into that mix, it, it's really interesting how some things are very similar, but so so completely different in, in a lot of ways as well. Whether it, you talk about anything from politics to gaming to uh, music to, to anything. So. Yeah. <laughs> Just, it, it, it's, yeah, it's really interesting, to, despite being so close, how it's really so different. Very divided. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so... So, uh, so uh, did you want to add anything? Like, uh, as of, like, you, you live you live in Korea now, how, how are your gaming habits? Oh, uh, yeah, I mean... Do you want me to kind of go into a bit, a bit about me first? Or? <laughs> let, let's, let's, let's hear, let's hear your, your story. Here, I'm here sure. my story, your Uncle Taylor's story. I'll, I'll pull up a chair to the fire, and you, you get out the guitar, and, and we'll, we'll go from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, not at all. But oh my god, the legend, the legend <laughs> speaks <laughs> hardly. <laughs> but, uh, okay, okay. I guess when I, I honestly don't remember this, but I, when I was really, really, really young, I probably was like three or four. My parents took me over to a a friend's, uh, my my one of my parents' friend's house, and they had a regular Nintendo or the NES, and they had Mario, and I would sit there and play it, and uh, this would be like 89, 90. Yeah. And, and so you're kind of starting to slowly get into more of the, the, the beginnings of the, the Super Nintendo generation and whatnot. But my family was not really financially set for that. So instead, on my fifth birthday, because they saw how much I loved Nintendo and how much I loved playing it whenever I went over there and stuff, they actually got me a system. And they got me Ray the, the, the Ray Nintendo and Mario and stuff, and I would play that forever, ever, ever. And like some of the, the games that I had as a kid were a lot of them were like platformers. So I had like, yeah. um, oh, I had Mario, Mega Man, uh, what the hell was that game called? Like, Fact Fan I uh, da, 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 da. Fact Xanadu. Xanadu. Thank you. I can't talk. But yes, I actually had that. And I kind of consider that a bit of a platformer. Didn't know what the hell I was doing, but I I, I enjoyed that. And then. My dad, I seen him, and he and I would play Final Fantasy together when, uh, my, before my parents had divorced, and so I spent a lot of time playing like that. Ice hockey, love ice hockey. Oh yeah, that's a great one. Such a fantastic game. Um, let's see what else. Double Dragon, even though I know it's a terrible port, but I love I love that. I game. love that game though. I, I I mean I get it, and people don't like that it didn't have two players, but I still really enjoy the game. The music is really fun for the NES version. Oh yeah, like I love that. It's just I I always got stuck at the the third stage. I don't even remember, like, the, the dudes that came out of the mountain. <sighs> oh, yeah. I, I, I used to get to about the fifth stage. And Is there there's, there's only four. Uh, I thought there was five, but maybe I'm wrong. I, I, I forget. Anyway, I, I got pretty far most of the time, but I could never quite beat the game. I mm -hmm. just could just never do it. That's all right. I, 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 I get to get the third stage, so shows how crappy I am. Uh, another one that I really played was uh, King's Knight, the really terrible shooter uh, game that... Uh, Squaresoft made that I, I believe if I remember, correct, remember correctly it was made before Final Fantasy and that game is dastardly hard <laughs> they, I, I've never I haven't even beaten it to this day I hate that. well it's not that I hate the game I just suck at it yeah. and it's, it's just evil 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 welcome to the NES era right where <laughs> just about every game was hard yeah and then uh, a game that I actually I didn't play until a lot later uh, it, was Dragon Quest, well, Dragon Warrior at the time, and right. 
how my name came out because depending on the the first four letters of the name determines a certain point value and that point value determines your stat growths and your ba your base stats and stuff and how it turned out for mine was either like one like one of the top three best <laughs> so the game for me was really really easy and so <laughs> I would always I would always love playing it because whenever like I played it I would just like rock. And it was just like, oh, this is a really easy game, I, you know. And when I grew up and, and got older and actually talked to other people, because honestly, as a kid, I really didn't have very many friends for one reason or another <laughs> here. But, um, <laughs> just honest. But, uh, like, I also really didn't talk to very many people about games. So games to me became kind of more of a personal thing and it kind of almost like an escape in a way, like not not necessarily escapism. Like I hate the real world, but more of like, oh, I'm gonna go play some Nemo, little Nemo Dream Master, and be awesome that yeah. way. And like I, and then when I would pr put the games down, I would actually kind of go outside and imagine, like imagine my own kind of thing, and get lost in that, and kind of and enjoy that. And, and then the police had to bring you home because you got lost, right? No, actually, no, I didn't get lost. Was, oh, okay. Uh, but what I'm getting to with that is that eventually I got to a point where kind of middle school, a little bit definitely in high school, I drifted away from gaming. I, I played a little bit here and there. Like I, I honest, honestly, I liked playing the, like the Madden games and the like Doom. Especially, I love Doom 64, so I always, I always played Doom 64 and then a lot of the Madden games. And then I, I would play those, and then I kind of. When I wasn't playing those, I was either doing stuff with my friends, or I was playing—not not playing, but like practicing for cross country, or I would uh, write. And so that for that stretch of seven years or so, I really didn't do much gaming. It's just kind of how it turned out. And it wasn't until I went to college and met my best friend that I actually kind of got back into gaming. And a lot of it's been RPGs and stuff. Uh, but I, I do like to play other games. I like racing games. I like puzzle games and platformers and that sort of thing. It's just I, there's a, lot, a big stretch of time where I didn't play very many games or I didn't have an opportunity to play very many games or I was just doing other things. Where, so I kind of missed a long time. And plus, yeah, you did always playing a lot. <laughs> yeah, so there's yeah, a lot a of stuff. Way, it sounds like. <laughs> yeah. So I... Like, though I really enjoy games, there's always this part of me that really enjoys games, but there's, there's this other part of me that kind of drifts away from it, where, uh, probably with yourself as well, you know, you want to do other things, you want to travel, you want to, for my, well, for myself, I want to travel, or I want to listen to music, or I want to write, or I want to just kind of do something else, and I really, I don't have that drive in me to sit there and always be have have a game ready to play like I, I can't sit there and say all right monday i'm playing this game and then like i'll play it and play it and play it and then i'll kind of get bored of it and then i'll pick up another one immediately right after that i kind of I, I can't do that <laughs> so yeah, yeah. No, I, I get that feeling a lot um i think as gaming's grown up it, it that's kind of happened to a lot of people you know it's it's constantly being bombarded with okay you're playing this game now but in a week you know, this next big release is coming out, so you're going to end up putting down that other game, and you're going to want to buy this new game, and everything is constantly coming out. It's just technology is moving so fast in, in every regard, and gaming is trying to keep up just like everything else. And, you know, company wants to make a, a million dollars now, but they also need to make a million dollars in a month from now. So they're constantly pumping out games, it seems. Yeah, yeah, I and I, and I, I, I yeah, I, I can definitely see that, mm. I, for example, when was it? Hmm, November. No, not November. Fuck no. no um, there was, maybe either like November or October, just a couple months ago. There was four or five different games that came out within the span of that month. And right. so you had like the HD remake of Eco and Shadow of the Colossus. Uh, you had, I can, I can remember two of the four. <laughs> you had uh, Aono Kiseki, which is a game. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> it's a game. It's a game. <laughs> it's a game on a PSP. And honestly, I've even though I bought it back in September, I have not even played it other than a demo at Tokyo Game Show. <laughs> so like, that shows how, how how slow I can be with games at times. And there was two other games, but like I oh one was the 25th anniversary for Dragon Quest. Ah yes, I remember uh, that. So 
And there was a couple of other games, and I, I didn't need to really play the Dragon Quest one, because I've played through them, and I've beaten them and whatnot, so I could kind of like look at them and be like, oh, that's so pretty, and then kind of put it off the side. But right. I, like, honestly, I, I breezed through Eco and Shadow of the Colossus because I hadn't played them in years, and even though I, I really want to play I don't know, Kiseki, I haven't, and it's just kind of like, uh, and you have like so many games that come out now, like you had Itadaki Street or like Fortune Street in the States, it just came out. Uh, you've got Skyrim that came out, even though I'm not playing it. It's just, it, there's just so many games. That I, oh, it's crazy. It's just so hard to keep up. <laughs> yeah. It's really hard to keep up. Yeah, Mario Kart 7 just came out. And... Uh, there's the, the Super Mario Land 3D. There was Gears of War 3. There was Arkham City. I mean, the list goes on and on and on of just how many big, big games have come out. And, I, I mean, I don't know how some people can do it, but they go out and they buy just about every game. You know, Call of Duty 3 and Battlefield 3, they go out and buy all these games. And some, I don't know if they're actually playing them all the time or, or what, but some, somehow they're, they're managing their time enough to dump 20 hours in a, into a game within a couple of days it seems like some of them yeah, and more power to them like if that, i mean if that's if that if that if they're able to do that and that's how they you know if, if they enjoy games that much to do that more power to them yeah sure i just i find for myself it's really hard to make that kind of time i i, I wish i could but in another instance as you said I, I mean i like playing a game for a couple hours and then after that i kind of need a bit of a break it just you know, my mind's thinking about too many things half the time. Probably the same way with a lot of other people. I it's, think so. Uh, I, I, yeah, I just, I don't know. It seems like, it seems I don't really talk other than online to some people, it, but it seems I talk to them about games. It feels like they, they, they're always inundated with this and they inundate me with it. And I'm just kind of like, ah, I can't handle this. It's too much game information. So I, can, <laughs> I, I, I go, I go crazy. Well, you're on overload. I'm on. <laughs> it's, it's true because when you, when I get online as well, you know, I go to often gaming sites or, or gaming forums and stuff. And well, that's what the site's meant for. It's meant for that idea. So funny thing about that, honestly, I really don't go to very, like any gaming sites. I, I go to forums and only one yeah. forum. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. Like my my internet is there's there's eight blocks. One is the forum. One is Facebook. One is my Gmail. One is random news and funny pictures. And then the other is obviously what everybody has, the weather. So I mean, yeah, you thought really? I don't have the weather. I I, I open my window and I look. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, that was sarcastic. I, I don't trust the weather, the weather man or lady. So I was. <laughs> People, did you not? I, I was going. Ah, uh, you thought I was going to say porn. You did. You did. You had to have thought I was going to say porn, right? Well, I, and I, I didn't know what kind of porn, but I, <laughs> I did think you were going to say porn. <laughs> see, see, I didn't. Well, How tricky am I? Tricky. It could be. It could be. You know, weather. It's weather porn. Yeah. They, they have that nude weather channel, don't they? So they could I'm be not, what you're looking at. If so, I am unaware of this, and. <laughs> Shows how detached I am from the world of porn. <laughs> in Japan, you're not that detached. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I've been there. I, I've walked the streets. I've seen the stuff. <laughs> but I live in a small town. It's a nice town. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're telling yourself that. <laughs> yeah. They keep it hidden, so it's, it's okay. I'm sure it's a pirate town, and there's all kinds of dangerous type individuals who, who pass through. I'm going to win this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it's interesting <laughs> to hear kind of your backstory, my backstory, and to try to piece together some of the things that are similar and, and obviously not similar. And it sounds like we kind of grew up in... Although, you know, I didn't back away from gaming, I, I suppose, in any way, even though I didn't have those consoles and stuff. But, you know, from the young age, I guess, we, we kind of have a similar situation where we grew up with, you know, we had a console, but that's what we had. We had a handful of games, and that's all we had. And, and we enjoyed those games, and we loved them. But we didn't move on quickly, as other people did. And I don't know what that says about us, but... Maybe Just our value poor. to certain games is different. <laughs> well, we were poor. Uh, there's no denying that we were poor. <laughs> but maybe maybe that gives us a, a different outlook or value of a game that we have. And and I, I'm a I'm pretty bad. You know, I'll go online and uh, I'll, I'll try to import games. I I'm stuck with doing the reverse importing of 
you know, with RPGs, I, I've got to import the English version, and I've got to do it in reverse. I've got to import an English version of a game, whereas other people sometimes are, you know, importing a Japanese version or perhaps a European version. I'm telling you, you and, just learn Japanese. It's just that easy, uh, right? right? <laughs> hey, guess what? I'll still have to import those too. So. <laughs> I'm screwed either way. But I'll finally find something online for cheap, and, and I'll find a bunch of them, so I'll, I'll get a bit crazy and, and you know, start buying a bunch of games that I, I obviously can't play and finish, but I'll buy them anyways because I'm thinking, you know, someday I'm, I'm going to get around to beating that, or someday I'm going to get around to finally playing that game. I've got tons of games I can look on the shelf right now that are still unopened. It's just, there's just, it's just hard to find the time. I wish I could, and, and, I, and I love the games that I buy. I don't, I don't feel like I wasted my money. But I've kind of become the the game player who's also just partly pseudo collector. Funny thing is, well, maybe not funny, but I'm actually kind of the same way. Like for a while, for a long stretch of time, uh, when since I moved here and been working here, I uh, I would get a paycheck and then I'd be instantly like, I need to buy games. You know, <laughs> I'm not going to be able to play half of these games. I'm just going to buy, 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 buy. And that might be because we grew up with you know just only a handful of games to play. And so you, you kind of grow up that, but now since you have the finances to just be like, I'm just going to buy this, this, this. Yeah, you, you get pretty crazy. And, and I've had, I remember being back home and when I had local, you know, local retro shops that I could go to and I, I would regularly go in and drop $100 at least once a week, if not more. I mean, it was just, yeah, I feel like buying this game today. Uh, Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. I love that game. I'm going to go pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> and it was getting crazy for a while. I mean, I, I'm not going to lie. I have a about a backstock of, I think my, my collection is around 700 or something ridiculous now. And, and I've played most of them, but it's just, I, I don't even think about it half the time. I'm just, whoa, I got a lot of games here. And that's uh, another thing is that, like, I've kind of, the collection I have really isn't that massive. I mean, I, I probably have about, I'm estimating here. 200 to 300 games. So not yeah. really that many. But I also have a lot of slime stuff. I love slimes. So I've got a lot of like slime memorabilia or Dragon Quest memorabilia. Right. And I also collect Didakuma, Lazy Bear. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, so I have like a ton of that crap everywhere. <laughs> so. Yeah, and I guess that into itself is a lot of money. I've kind of stayed away from collecting that kind of stuff. There is the odd thing that I'll see and, and I'll really want to get it. But generally, I, I kind of don't collect the, the stuffed toys or... But they're so squishy. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, the standees. I don't get too crazy. There's, there's some games I absolutely love, but I, I don't really go searching online for a cardboard cutout of uh, Master Chief from Halo or something. I, I don't get quite that crazy. Uh, I try to keep it within limits. of I'm already spending... 50 or 60 dollars often on the new game and that's kind of enough for me I, I don't want to get too overboard I'll buy the soundtrack sometimes that maybe that's kind of the, the limit for me there there are a few things where I've made exception but generally speaking the game and that's the end for me and the soundtracks are murderous too they, I, I, they're, uh... they're really expensive some of them especially once they go out of print and you're trying to find them even used some of them are so expensive mm, sure for sure uh, are CDs expensive in Korea? I, I mean, I don't collect music at all, so mm-hmm. I couldn't tell you, but I don't think they're... It, it, how, how much do you... Do you have an, uh, like a guesstimate about how much they might cost? Uh, you... I guess in U.S. dollars, I would say around 10 to $13 maybe oh, on really? it. Really? I'm just guessing, though. I really don't have a good concept of that. Okay. But that, that said, I can't go to the, any stores here and try to pick up, say, Dragon Quest Eight or orchestra or something. They don't have that stuff. Well, I mean, I just I was just more so just just CDs in general, and uh, maybe not even just game soundtracks, just CDs of. Yeah, and I'm just taking a guess. I, I really don't have okay. that much of a concept of it. Because in J- in Japan, CDs are expensive. They're really like they 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 charge you. They charge you good, and they they don't they don't they don't make it. They don't lube it up either. They just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it, it, about uh, with the exchange rate as it is now. You're probably looking at uh, uh, when I, when some of the CDs that I've bought, newer CDs. That you're looking at probably like thirty some odd dollars. That's for a single disc CD. For like for like CDs. Oh. I got 
it's been it's been a while. Like I usually just kind of go to like the the older like used CDs at this point. Right. It's still like twelve dollars or so, but yeah. Time to go back to vinyl. <laughs> go back to vinyl. Vinyl's cassette awesome. Or Vinyl's awesome. But then you get into like the the game soundtracks, and those themselves will be you, you know you're looking at maybe depending on where you're buying them that price or a lot more and. I also like to buy Dojin CD music, which isn't as expensive, but it can get very expensive because I'll just want to buy all of them. <laughs> so, right. So. I guess with game soundtracks, too, you're, you're generally looking at two or more discs, usually. You, there are obviously ones that are single disc, but many of them are more than, than two sometimes. That and also, I, I really like uh, when, for example, Falcom... The JDK band, they like to do live performances, but they also like to put vocals to a lot of the music in their games. Yeah. So not only do I get the soundtrack, but I get the alternate version or the remixed version, and then I also get the vocal version. So it's like three, <laughs> three different CDs for like the same, well, it's different, but kind of the same music. So <laughs> it's, time, it's time for the men in white coats to take you away, it sounds like. They're... they're, they're they have found a good way of taking my money <laughs> without me complaining at all. They, so. They've got your your preferred customer picture on the wall, you know. <laughs> and I do, like I, because I always order <laughs> stuff online from them. And I, I'm I'm going to say I kind of doubt there's that many foreigners in Japan ordering Falcom stuff from them on like a monthly basis. Probably so they're, not. They're, they're probably like, oh, it's that Taylor dude. Thanks for your money. We Fool. love this guy. <laughs> But. <laughs> but but yeah so yeah that's that's I guess another thing is that because I really I like to listen to music when I write and a lot of um, that kind of music is is good to not necessarily I, I think about the game I actually don't think about the game too much when I listen to the music unless it's really really that great like Zeal I always, from Chrono Trigger I'll always think of the the song from Zeal for Chrono Trigger I always think of Zeal when I hear that song but there's a lot of music in video games where you can just hear it and instead of really thinking about the game I'll think more of, uh, I'll have a feeling about it or i have some sort of emotion or thought about it and it's a good way to kind of get me to get into a mood for when I want to write a certain chapter or when I want to write something certain, a certain scene and I think that for me it helps. Well you're a lot deeper than me. I, I hear a game song and I, my ears just perk up and I, all I can think of is you know that moment in the game or, or whatever you know, action happens during that particular piece of music or something. I, I can never just hear something in the background and not think about that game specifically. I, I just can't do it. it. It comes to my my brain instantly. If I hear a Mega Man song, I just jump out of my chair and I'm really excited. <laughs> <laughs> well, like uh, there, there's there's a couple like Zeal, uh, a really good one that I always think of. The, I, I actually think of the game and I can't really detach it from it is uh, the what, the final boss theme from Donkey Kong Country. Oh, that's a good song. And uh, a couple of the, a couple of the Donkey Kong Country in in the series a couple of the songs from there. Uh, the opening scene the well not scene but the opening theme from Mega Man 3. Yeah, that, that's one of my favorite songs probably from the entire Mega Man series. It's awesome. Same. It's a great song. So, but, but yeah, so that's that. Um, is there anything you wanted to add to that? Uh, not really, I guess, from the personal standpoint. No, I think we should maybe move on to some more interesting topics. We're, we're not the most interesting men in the world. That's for Nonsense. Sure. I am the most interesting man in the world. Oh, you're the, you're the Dos Equis guy? The, yes. The most interesting man in the world? I am. I knew you looked familiar. <laughs> do, you, do you always have the two women around your arms and cigar as well? It's actually three, the ones behind me. Oh, oh, sorry, my mistake. I, I haven't <laughs> eaten that commercial yet. Come on, jeez. Um, no, yeah, uh, yeah, I think this is actually probably a good point to kind of wrap it up, since it's just a bit more of an intro thing. And we can, for later episodes, we can go into different topics and also have guests on and kind of go into that. So you have this idea. I do. And you, you want to explain this idea. I don't. <laughs> no, I'm just. Uh, I'm thinking just for a little spice, 
for our podcast to make it a little bit different than some of the other, I guess, gaming podcasts out there. You know, and there's a lot of great ones, and I, and I really enjoy listening to a lot of what people have to say about gaming. I thought maybe we could try something a little bit different, and I thought we should add a game to our podcast. A game to a gaming podcast. A game to the gaming podcast. Who would have Basically, thought that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what a sh- shocking revelation. <laughs> No, I, I thought it'd be kind of fun. Whenever we have an episode that's just you and I talking, it'll be it'll be fun, but it'll be even more interesting when we can possibly get some guests on. But basically, our games will just be you versus me. I, I don't know. Should we, maybe we should make a consequence for the loser. I, I don't know how. <laughs> uh, we can we can work something out on that. that uh, but um, I, in, including a, a bomb in the mail or something. D- 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 just a stink uh, bomb. A stink bomb. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I will fart into a box and I'll send it your way. That'll. Come on, you know that doesn't work. You got to fart in a jar. Oh yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. How silly of me. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I wouldn't mind even having you know the guest join in on it too, because that. I mean... No, that's that's what I want. I, I think it would be a lot of fun if the guest doesn't mind participating. I, th- I think we could have some real fun with these, some of these games. So you know, we've sat down. You and I have come up with a few different game ideas. And, and we did today, sit down together. We have met face to face. Yeah, not recently. <laughs> we, we, I, I guess for those who don't know, uh, we we did meet at TGS 2011. Uh, and the, the the videos are still on my my camera. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's okay. Uh, I, I I still feel bad for for missing that one photo that that you wanted. No, 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 you can. You, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm but, right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyways, um, but yeah, no, we have met in person and potentially here in the near future again, which would be really cool. That would be nice. Uh, so yeah, we did sit down and we wrote some stuff, and we were thinking a, a game would be really fun. So today, uh, are we decided on this game? I, I, I think yeah, th- that was good. We we let the coin decide on this one. So. All right, we we did. We had a bit of an argument about how to do heads or tails, which is really ridiculous to me, but we did <laughs> <laughs> somehow. And we ended up up. anything and everything. (laughs) Well, hopefully not. But uh, anyways, everything. All right, the sky's blue. (laughs) It's actually purple. Really, purple. Yes. So, anyways, the the game we're thinking of playing today is simply back and forth naming Mega Man bosses. So, any boss from a Mega Man game. We're sticking with, I guess, the stage bosses. Correct. You're gonna put mini bosses in there too? Oh, I, do they have names? Some of them? I, they probably do, but I have no clue. I don't either. So forget the mini bosses. That's 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 pretty tough. <laughs> that, so we're sticking with just some stage some stage theme bosses, I guess. Okay, and honestly, I don't know. I I hope anybody who is listening isn't expecting ever like us to have like all of the information down. Rob, man, phone in. Tell, tell us some <laughs> answers quickly. Lefty. <laughs> Rob. I want to win! I want to win! Anywho, so if if we aren't, you know, if we aren't, da, 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 it's because we suck. <laughs> it's obviously because we are we are pathetic and we are losers. But we will have fun doing so. Yeah. So, anyways, the the only stipulation is it's got to be the stage theme boss, and it can be from any Mega Man series. So it can be from X. It can be from the regular numbered series. Blue uh, it can be from the Zero series. Am I missing something? The ZX series? I don't know what else I'm missing here. I, is that all of them? More or less? The Mega Man Battle Network. Battle Network, but they are recycled. The bosses, right? Yeah, so. We didn't right. decide who's going first, though. No, we didn't, and I'm not doing the coin thing, so I'm letting you start. <laughs> oh, how kind of you. <laughs> all right, I guess, first off, uh, Gutsman. Gutsman. All right, I will stick with the same game, then, and I will go with Bomb Man. All right, and I'll stick with the same and go Cutman. Oh, jeez. All right, I'll go Elect Man. Uh, you already said, son of a bitch. Uh, Fireman. Iceman. And that's, that's, that's it for that. That's uh, and one. We're not even doing this by game, but all right. As I say, I'm more of the, honestly, I'm more of the blue bomber kind of guy. So, like. That's I, cool, that's cool. Okay, um, well, let's go with Blizzard Man. Blizzard Man, Mega Man 6, right? Uh, Night Man, Mega Man 6. I, I thought you were going to pick some, <laughs> stop making the same name. <laughs> uh, 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 Yamato Man. All right, I'll go Toad Man, Mega Man 4. Uh, Pharaoh Man. Tomhawk Man. Do, 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 how, do, do we have, like, a certain time you want to give, like... Yeah, a, let, let's, I, let's say 5 to 10 seconds. If you think you're going to be out, just just call yourself out. Okay, okay, Ring Man. Uh, Ring Man? Uh, Gravity Man. 
That's from five, isn't it? Five, I think, yeah. Okay. Um, here's an easy one. Neptune Man. Neptune Man. Um, Boy. Astro Man. Okay. Uh, da, 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 to- no, you already said that one. Damn I said Gemini Man. Gemini Man. Gemini Man. Gemini Man. Nice one. That's I will go with Skull Man. Okay, that's four. Uh, Dust Man. Ooh, Dust Man. Mega Man Four, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, we have not gone with Mega Man Two, so I will say Metal Man. Quick Man. Nice one. Uh, Bubble Man. Crash Man. Flash Man. Air Man. Shadow Man. Uh, Top Man. <laughs> Which one? Top Man. Top, oh, I love that music, actually. Uh, Spark Man. Uh, that, I, actually, that's probably my favorite theme, is Spark Man's theme. I will go with... And I'm blanking, 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 blanking. Uh, I, I, I can't think of anything. Well, my next one was going to be Wheel Gator. Is it from X2? Yeah, he's from X2. He's the big tank gator tank. Well, I, I remember, I remember that him, and he comes up from the ground. It's just right, right. Uh, like, um, I, I of course, we could have gone on and on. Obviously, right? So, well, no, no, uh, well, obviously not, because I can't. Do- <laughs> <laughs> well, no, like, yes, I win. Game one goes to me. Round one, chalk one up. Yeah, like I, I think of some now, like Needle Man. Yeah, Needle Man. Wood Man. Of once the game's over, that's when they all they start flooding out of you, right? Yes. Storm. Huh? Storm Eagle. Oh yeah, see, like that's that's a yeah, that's I love that. I don't really like unless somebody says it. I can think of like what is his name? Boomer Kawanger. Yeah. I can think of that one. That Launch that octopus. Oh, okay. Somehow we're continuing the game. <laughs> I mean, well, cause I I feel bad because I totally like chumped out like a loser. And, yeah. No, no, no. Uh, no, you know that's the thing when when you get in one of these games. Often you have these things in your mind, but uh, it's just on the tip of your tongue, and, you, and you're <laughs> under that hard man, bunch man, magnet man, son of a bitch, <laughs> ah. snake man, snake man. Ah, damn it! <laughs> I hope that uh, I hope games I can provide a better challenge next time. Well, I'm sure you will. You know, we'll pick a diff- completely different topic next time. So of course, God. we're, we're going to draw it from a hat so that it's hopefully reasonably fair from. From the future, hopefully. Maybe. I pray. <laughs> maybe. maybe. <laughs> Who knows? You're going to destroy me one of these games, so don't, don't get too uh, worked one up. that 5 will not be a good ratio for me. <laughs> no, but <laughs> I'm still leading one nothing for now. <laughs> Just, I, I, ah, son of a... Ah. That's the best part of these games is you can't really be angry at the other person. It's yourself, right? No, I, I don't I, like I've that failed a bunch of these games before, so... I, I, I hate disappointment. <laughs> You're still the most interesting man in the world, so don't feel bad. I'm the most disappointingly interesting man in the world, and that's... <laughs> With three ladies at your side, so... <laughs> Two at the side, one at the back. Sorry. So give me a back room. <laughs> it's painful to sit all the time. I don't even want to know what the two at the side are doing. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I've been to Japan, and I've seen the streets, and I've seen the posters on the walls. You know the truth. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, that I guess I got. Oh, just wrap it up. I uh, would you just like to recap anything for yourself, there, Sushi? Uh, no, I just uh, <laughs> I hope people will find at least some of our humor interesting or show at least somewhat appealing. And if you if you have any comments, we'd love to hear them. And as well, if you think you might be interested in being a guest, that'd be fantastic. Definitely. Well, well said. So, comments. Criticisms, anything that I, I, I am totally cool with, hey, don't do this, or hey, this sounds really dumb, or hey, why don't you do this? You know, absolutely. It, it, totally open to that. It's always, yeah, absolutely. always good. It, it will only help our show get better, so we're, we're going to be totally open to criticism for sure, and maybe we're not going to totally agree with it, but we're going to accept it. Unless it's troll stuff, and then that really. <laughs> I love trolls. Have you seen Troll Two? That movie's awesome. No, no, I don't watch B movie, B like horror films. I don't even know if it's B. It might be D or E. <laughs> uh, no, I I don't. Actually, I honestly, I'm not a big horror per, horror film kind of guy. Oh, it's not. It's not a horror movie. It's just that bad. It's it's not scary. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. I don't watch those kind of movies. I don't watch Troll. I don't watch Leprechaun. I don't watch. Whatever, whatever. Smut. 
<laughs> I don't watch such trash. No, I don't know what else to call it. <laughs> no, like I, nah, I never really got into the the film kind of thing, and just like I'm only just now kind of getting into movies a lot more as of late. So, no, I get it. I, I, I mean, I watch some films and stuff, but uh, it's it's mostly for, through friends that sit around as a group and watch something. Okay, yeah. With that, um, as 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 Sushi said, please leave comments. Any sort of criticism, something that you, things that you like, things you don't like, that sort of thing. If you are interested in being a guest, you honestly, as I just proved, you honestly don't have to be the most quick-witted individual with the fountain of knowledge right behind you, because that well dried on me a long time ago. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that sort of thing. What you'd like to hear, what you think we could do to make things better, that sort of thing and any sort of secret love admirers would always be great. So, um, yeah. <laughs> nothing ever wrong with for, that. For you, for, for you. For, for me, for me, for me. Please, anybody and everybody. Don't share the love, it's all yours. Be greedy. <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, thank you for listening, and thank you, Sushi. I really appreciate you prodding me along and joining, and hopefully it will be a wonderful journey. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. I, and I guess I'd like to say thank you to you as well for, you know, having me on and taking the, the challenge, I guess. But, uh, <laughs> so, yeah. all right. So thank you guys for listening and have a good day. <laughs>